Whoa, we're back with an ocarina review. Today's victim, I mean, not victim, this is actually gonna be a good one. Today's instrument is the Coda Everyday Carry Flute, a very unique double ocarina by Carl Ahrens. He's the founder of Mountain Ocarinas as well. And the Coda costs $60 on Amazon, affiliate link in the description. And before we begin, make sure you're subscribed and leave a like if you enjoy this video. On to the review. First off, $65 for a good double ocarina is extremely affordable. Most double ocarinas you'll find will be a lot more pricey even if they're made of plastic. In the package you'll find the instrument, a carrying sleeve, a fingering chart with some music on the back, mutes for the instrument, and some other stuff like business cards and documentation for the website, codaedc.com, which has a lot more learning resources. The mute plugs are actually really, really cool. You insert them into the fipple holes of the ocarina, and the ocarina will then sound like pitched air. The only way I can describe it is to show you. This makes the coda quiet enough that you could potentially play with someone sleeping in the next room over. That's bonkers. And there's a little slot to store them on your instrument right here. We've gone over what's in the package, but what about the ocarina? The main premise of the coda flute is two chromatic octaves in your pocket, and they've definitely succeeded with that. This thing is tiny and durable. It's made of polycarbonate, so you can take it anywhere, and no matter what you throw at it, it will not break. And it is indeed a fully chromatic double ocarina in the key of C. It has an official range of C5 to D6, in its first chamber, though you can extend it lower a little bit with some technique. And B5 to C7 in the second chamber. Basically, the coda has the full range of a 12-hole alto C and a 12-hole soprano G combined. With a fully chromatic range of C5 to C7, And if you're a little creative, with that first chamber you can go a bit lower to B4 and A4 with some technique. First off, it sounds really good, especially for a plastic ocarina. It's a bit less bright sounding compared to Carl's other instruments in the mountain ocarinas, but it still has a much brighter sound than most ocarinas you'll hear. The coda has medium breath pressure teetering on high, and the breath pressure is fairly stable throughout. There's no twists and turns as you ascend a scale, you just add a little bit more air the higher you go. Other than the innovative form factor, really nice sound and durability, I do have some comments. There are a few awkward things about the coda, but this isn't necessarily criticism. Compared to a traditional multi-chamber ocarina, there's a lot more stakes when you switch chambers. Bear with me on this. If you're going from an E on the second chamber to an A on the first chamber, you have to do a lot of weird finger wizardry as you still switch chambers with your mouth. On the second chamber, you have most of the holes covered, and on the first chamber, you only have two. To continue down this line of awkwardness, some of the fingerings for sharps and flats are not what you'd expect, especially if you've played more traditional ocarinas. For example, to play a low C sharp on the first chamber, you raise your right thumb and keep everything else covered. To play a low C sharp on the second chamber, you keep everything covered, but then lower your left pinky. And on the first chamber, to play an F sharp, you use your ring finger. Here's F natural, here's F sharp. And on the second chamber, you use your middle finger. Here's F natural, here's F sharp. There are other awkward fingerings for the sharps and flats, but the point is that a lot of these fingerings are not what you'd expect from a typical ocarina, or even a mountain ocarina, which has its own quirks and its fingering pattern. However, I can let all of this slide, because frankly, these are things you can get used to with practice. 
If I played the coda every single day, all these weird things would feel completely natural to me. And the coda is also an amazing feat of musical engineering. This is the most compact double ocarina I've ever seen. And it has the exact same range as my Spencer Virtuoso double. Provided on the coda, you can do the weird techniques to play the low B and A. But look how much smaller the coda is, both in front and on the side. These two instruments have the same range, but could not be more different. It's amazing. But despite the differences, these are both double ocarinas with approximately the same range. Therefore, since we need to compare the coda to some double ocarina, we'll compare it to my Spencer. So I have noted that when it comes to chamber switches on the coda, it is a little awkward and does take getting used to because of the, all the finger action going on. If you're ascending a scale and just want to hit the next E, you have to do so much finger wizardry. Awkward. And compare that to when you switch chambers on a traditional double ocarina. It is a lot more natural and you don't need to move your fingers nearly as much. In addition, with traditional double ocarinas, you can kind of prep notes as you change chambers. As you saw there, I was playing C's on the first chamber, but then could prep the high A in the second chamber. And when I was going from the F to the D, I could prep the D as well going downwards. It works both ways on double ocarinas. With the coda, you cannot do that. You cannot prep notes as you're switching chambers. This makes switching chambers a lot more cumbersome and awkward, but again, it is something you can get used to with practice. And if you're playing songs that dip into the low notes of the second chamber on the coda, sometimes you're better off with a single chamber ocarina. That's awkward. A lot more natural. As you can see with that bit from the Wind Waker theme song, the single chamber ocarina didn't struggle at all as I was hitting the high E's, whereas with the coda, I had to switch chambers and move a lot of fingers around to go from the high D to the high E when I was playing those little runs. On the coda, songs that only dip between chambers are really difficult. And again, I cannot emphasize this enough. I have spent a few hours with the coda to do this more confidently, but if I spent even more time practicing, there wouldn't be any issue. Practice makes perfect, so these awkward things can be overcome with practice. But is the Coda Everyday Carry Flute for you? If you're expecting the Coda to feel like an ocarina that you're used to, it will not. It's technically a double ocarina, but it is very much its own instrument. If you buy a Coda and expect it to be just like any ocarina you've ever played, you will be disappointed. If you treat it as a new instrument that just happens to have a lot in common with ocarinas, you'll probably love it. I really love the somewhat bright tone, ultra wide range, affordable price, convenient music, Mutes, that Carl Aaron's durability, and amazing innovation that makes this two octave instrument fit into my pocket. It is absurd that this exists, and I'm so happy about it. And while I did find the coda awkward to play sometimes, that could easily be alleviated with practice. Even with its more difficult learning curve, I am a huge fan of the coda everyday carry flute. The coda isn't for everyone, and that's okay. Whether or not it's for you, it's an amazing feat of musical innovation. With practice, the coda truly has the potential to live up to its namesake of being your everyday carry flute. Thanks for watching this review, and if I have convinced you to buy a coda, please use my affiliate link in the description. It helps support the channel, and I appreciate it a ton. If you're interested in other non-traditional ocarinas, I recently reviewed the predecessor to the Coda, the Mountain Ocarina. It's back, it's amazing, and you can buy it on Amazon, if it's in stock. Otherwise, thanks again, leave a like, subscribe for more, watch that video next, and I'll see you next time. Happy tootin'.